Hey everyone, welcome to Code Porn, the show that has nothing to do with porn and everything to do with code. In this episode, we're going to look at the async await keywords and examine what it does under the covers. The problem with asynchronous code is that it can be significantly more complex to use and write than synchronous code, especially if you need to coordinate many related operations and deal with errors. And this is why most developers choose less efficient synchronous alternatives to writing async code. But the main new feature in c 5 is language level support for implementing asynchronous methods. We get this through the async and await keywords, which makes it possible to write and use asynchronous code while retaining most of the simplicity of simpler synchronous code. The async keyword gets added to a methods declaration. This tells the compiler that we want to use asynchronous features inside of this method. The async keyword does not change the method's signature though. It doesn't change how the method is used, only how it's compiled. This means it can't be used to overload a method. For example, these two methods are identical even though one has async applied to it and the other does not. Async simply declares that we intend to use the await keyword, but we aren't bound by law to actually do so. As we'll see, using or not using await will make a big difference in how our code looks and works post-compile. Applying the async keyword to a method does not actually make it asynchronous. Actually, quite the contrary. Our method will still execute in a synchronous manner. But that doesn't mean that using the async keyword doesn't have an impact on our code. Let's look at this example console application. In the main method, we're newing up an instance of our worker class that does some expensive work that needs to get done while the user waits. We use a while loop to give an indication to the user that we're still waiting for the work to complete. Our worker class has two methods, do work to invoke the work and long operation, which just pretends to do something useful. When we run this, we won't actually see any progress indicators because our long operation is synchronous, which means it will block until it's done. Let's add the async keyword to our do work method and see what happens. It actually does the same thing it did without the async keyword. In reality though, our code has changed during compilation. Let's take a look at what happened to it. I'm using ILSpy to decompile our assembly. To actually see what async and await translate to, I've gone ahead and disabled the decompile async methods option inside of ILSpy. Otherwise, you would only really see the async and await keywords as we've written them in our code, which won't be very useful for this demonstration. First off, notice that we have a new class that we didn't write. The way async gets converted into asynchronous code is by building and using a state machine. This class is the state machine for the work we want to do. Except for the do work method, which is the method we marked with async, everything else is the same, just as we wrote it. But the do work method has been changed, and it doesn't look like anything that we wrote. It starts off by setting up a new instance of the state machine, and then stores a reference to the instance of our class that's currently executing. Next, a new async void method builder is created, and this is used to schedule and kick off the state machine. Then it sets an initial state up for the state machine to negative one. From there, we kick off the work using the async void method builder, using the start method and passing in a reference to the state machine instance. If we follow through, we get to a point where it actually kicks off our state machine to do work by invoking the move next method on our state machine. Now if you look close at this method, you'll notice that it's actually taking care of context switching for us. This means we don't have to worry about moving from one thread to another when we're using the async and await keywords. The move next method on our state machine is actually what we're interested in because that's where the method body from our do work method was actually moved to. To sum this up, there's a check on the current state. If it's good to go, then our original code is executed. We set is completed to false, write a message to the console, and then using the instance of our worker class, we invoke the long operation method. When it's done, we write another message to the console and then set is completed to true. Now, as we saw when we executed the demo, there's nothing asynchronous about this code. Not yet anyway. Let's go back to our example application and apply an await to the long operation method invocation. Now that we've applied the await to this method invocation, the method body up to this point will execute as normal and then the long operation will execute asynchronously and the rest of our application will continue executing. When the long operation is done executing whatever it needs to do, the remainder of the do work method body will then execute. Because we can't await a void method, we need long operation to return a task. So we'll just wrap our logic in a task, start it, and then return it. Now when we run this code, we see our pacifier working away until the operation has completed. Now we're running asynchronously. 
But what's changed in our code? Back in ILSpy, we now see two additional properties on the state machine class, an object called stack and a task awaiter. The only other difference is in our moveNext method, which has gotten a bit more complex. Now it's using an awaiter that is retrieved from our task returned by the long operation method. If it hasn't yet completed, then it sets the state to zero, copies the instance of the awaiter, and then subscribes to the await unsafe on completed event, which schedules the state machine to proceed to the next action when the specified awaiter completes. When this happens, we'll re-enter this method, and then since the state is now zero, we'll hit the else statement to do some cleanup. After that, it finishes executing the rest of our original code. So now that we've gone and had a look at what happens under the covers, hopefully it's clear that asynchronous code doesn't come for free. There is a cost associated with the async and await keywords, which should be considered before just slapping them on any old method that just happens to be running slowly. Just because you can, doesn't mean that you should. All right, well that's it for this episode. Be sure to subscribe to our channel, follow us on Twitter and Facebook, and visit codeporn.com when you have nothing better to do. See you next time.